Welcome to Barger Woodworking. It's going to be an interesting video. A friend of mine is building a custom home and he asked the uh, interior designer, he said, I want a about eight inch thick piece of walnut as my countertop for the vanity in the spare bath in the bathroom right as you enter the house. And she goes, you can't get anything that thick. So he called me up and I said, well, yeah, I'll just get some two inch, eight, four stock walnut, cut it out of 45 and join it at the corner. He said, make it for me. So this is a video of how I made that video from, or how I made the vanity from the actual uh, laying out the template for the exact size of the space where once he had to drywall up and buying the lumber, uh, cutting everything, gluing it up and the unique finish I used on it which was uh, something new which now I'm using all the time. I made this video about a month ago um, and I'm just getting around to editing it. Anyway, I hope you enjoy it. it. Should be a good one. Thanks. Okay, I brought my sawhorses over to the guy's house and this is template material that is already cut into about two inch wide strips and it's flexible kind of a plastic material. That little bottle I have in my hand is acetone and the acetone works as a glue with the template. So I made that uh, wooden form out of some scrap wood, put some blockers underneath it and put a level on it so it was level. And now I'm pushing the actual template material right into the corner and gluing it with the acetone. Uh, once I get the basic frame done, then I cut some smaller pieces and pushed it right up against the wall. Uh, it takes two seconds, three seconds for the acetone to actually make it stick. So the stuff is actually pretty cool. Uh, Anyway, this, this uh, technique, I've never seen it done before, but I wanted the wood to be as close as physically possible to fit in there. Uh, now, there's always going to be variations in the drywall. So, you, you know, you, you might end up with a gap no matter how hard you try. I did buy the template material from Stone Coat Countertops. Uh, you can look them up on the internet. It was uh, $30, and it's a huge roll. It's enough for my lifetime, I think. Anyway, uh, we um, held it in place. Uh, I put some extra pieces in there as a support. Uh, stuff cuts really easy. You just take a razor, score it, and bend it and it cracks right on the bend. Um, and then you put a couple drips of the acetone where you want it to stick. And it's really convenient because you can push pieces right up into an uneven space along the wall and get it exactly the way you want it. And you'll see when I'm done with the whole thing, uh, it fit perfectly. Uh, so I strongly recommend this technique if you want to make something that fits exactly into a space. Um, this is one of the last pieces I stuck on the sides to help, you know, get that little bit of a gap that was up against the wall. And this stuff held together. I mean, I threw it in the back of my car and brought it home. And it took a week or two before I was ready to actually start cutting. And it it's still together today. I haven't thrown it out yet. I wanted to see how long it would last. And it's it's still together. So if you need to make a template, this is a good way to do it. That's it. So 
stays together. Yeah, just like that, huh? Yeah. The journey starts at Franklin Wood Warehouse in Franklin, North Carolina. This is where I bought the 8-4 walnut uh, to make the project. Here it is once I got it home and one of the things you have to do when you buy rough lumber is sort it and figure out how you want to match everything and which pieces need to go together and which ones will match the best and you know what's going to look the best. So here I am sorting it and trying to decide which pieces and how they're going to be oriented for my job. First step is running everything through the joiner, which will give us a flat side and a flat edge. Once you have the flat edge and the flat side, you can run them through the thickness planer and get them all the same thickness. Uh, here I am cutting it, uh, each piece on my chop saw to the dimension that I need them to be. The first cut, I usually cut it and leave an extra inch or two so that I can make adjustments down the road. You notice I use the uh, stop on that that helps hold it down so that the board and the saw doesn't buck when it hits a, any tension in the wood. I've had it kick back at me a number of times. Just make shallow cuts and take your time doing it. Here I am again matching up the boards and this will be the final matchup. Now that looks good. You want to get the grain where it looks as good as it can together and then decide which pieces are going to be in the front, which are going to be in the back, which are going to be in the middle. Here I made my way to the thickness planer. Um, you notice I, it was moving around on me a little bit here, so I had to lock the wheels. Once you've ruined your hearing the way I did, uh, you are very aware of loud noises. So wear your hearing protection if you've got one of these. Here I am finally locking the wheels. The thickness planer is on top of an air filter. Here I am cutting the pieces at a 45 degree angle on the table saw. Uh, I started out getting it close and then just kind of inched it up to get it right on the line. Now again, I left myself probably two or three inches in the total width so that I could make adjustments and run the uh, these boards once I had the 45. They've got to be run through the joiner to get the edge perfectly flat so I can take the next step to glue it up. These are all, two of them are getting cut at 45 degree angles. Now it's important that you mark everything so you know exactly which piece you need to cut. Uh, I've screwed that up before too, so be careful and just document right, right on the board with a pencil because you're going to end up sanding it anyway. Here's what it's going to look like. There's your 45. And notice I marked them left, right, or back, middle, and front. Now here I'm putting the domino. I cut domino uh, dominoes into it with the Festool domino cutter. You set the, thing, the fence at 45 degrees and cut your dominoes. Now these Really, from what I've read, they don't help with rigidity or strength, but they definitely help when you uh, for alignment. So it's worth it. Now here I'm putting blue tape on the two 45s because I need to glue them together. And I'm trying, I use super glue to glue these 
uh, calls, they're called, onto the uh, 245s, and then I'm super gluing them. And then you just take a mallet and bang them off when you're done. The theory is beautiful, but as you'll see in a few minutes, I had some issues. The lesson I learned is if you're going to do it, glue them on, use the activator, but don't get all nuts when you tighten up the clamps because eventually they just pull loose. As you'll see, I ended up having to redo it a couple times and re-glue everything. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so. It really helps me out, and I'm actually making a teeny bit of money, like I said in my other video, maybe enough to buy dinner every couple months. <laughs> so, but it's free, it doesn't cost you anything, and if you could, I'd appreciate it. Here's the dominoes, and here's the glue up. And if you've ever done a glue up on expensive pieces of wood like this and an expensive project, you know you kind of get into panic mode uh, because if something screws up, which it usually does, it's going to become an issue for you. So I put glue on both sides. I always have water available to wipe it down. And I really like the uh, that brush. It's a Rockler uh, glue brush. I'll put a link for it in this description, but it's it's a nice thing to have. So here I'm trying to get the thing on. It would be nice if you had an extra set of hands, but I didn't. So you get it taped or get it all together, wipe as much glue off as you can, and clamp it. Now in a perfect world, I would have clamped that up and everything would have been razor tight and I could have said, good job, Marty, you're done. But you notice at the end, the one clamp moved a little bit and very slowly a couple of them moved. The second one in from the end here ends up moving on me. And I'm worried about having it square because I want this thing to be perfect. This is a good friend and it's a beautiful home he's building. So here I'm reapplying the tape and reapplying super glue and trying it again. Eventually, I ended up putting a square in both ends to make sure the thing was perfectly at a 45 degree angle and it glued up perfect. Um, if I do say so, I am very pleased with it, but boy, there were a few moments of sheer terror there when you're trying to glue it together and it's not going the way you hoped. Okay, here I took the template and taped it onto the wood, marked the width, because the width wasn't as uh, crucial as everything else, but I wanted the sides and the back to match up to the imperfections in the wall perfectly. And you'll see in the end, they did match perfectly. Now notice I left an extra inch or two on both ends. Always do that. When I first started doing woodworking, I cut everything precise and I lived to regret it. You need to leave yourself a little extra room so you can trim it to the exact size you need and then trim it a little bit more to make it perfect. Once it's glued up, now I'm cutting it to the perfect size. And this was a little scary. Uh, because it was a little over four feet wide and it's kind of hard. I put a block on my saw, the, uh, my table uh, sled. I put a block there to help hold the piece in place and then put a piece of wood, three quarter inch plywood on the other end so it could slide on it and stay level. 
This was a little kinky too. And of course, I didn't have, I, my shop is too small. I need more room, but hey, you do what you got to do. If you take your time, now notice I put that block in there, make as many jigs and stops and calls and whatever you need to do to, to make things precise and make them work right. Um, here I'm sanding everything, uh, particularly the ends. You'll notice a bottle of mineral spirits there. I like to use mineral spirits to not only raise the grain when you're sanding, which helps get it nice and silky smooth, but it also allows you to see what it's going to look like once you have finish on it. And also, you can see any scratches or imperfection in the surface. Um, always check to make sure everything's square and level, uh, as, particularly as you're sanding. And you can see this came out absolutely perfect. Um, I was so pleased. Anyway, uh, start with 120 grit, work your way up to 150, 180, 220, 320, and 400. Here I'm filling there one, there was one uh, hole, uh, knot hole in the board that I asked the client what color they'd like it filled in with, and they wanted it filled in with uh, very, very dark, dark brown. So I'm mixing some West Systems epoxy, and I'm mixing a trans, I think it's called trans tint, uh, dark brown, or walnut brown, I believe. And you just put a couple drops in, stir it up for about a minute, and then just put it in. You need to put the tape on the bottom because if you don't and there's any pass-through, believe me, your epoxy will drip all the way through it and end up stuck to your table along with your project. So take your time. Once it dries overnight, sand it. Start again with 120, 150, 180, 220, and 320. And get it all nice and flush. Again, I put mineral spirits on it so I can see if I left anything that was scratched up on the surface. Once you're done, pull it off, sand any little bit of epoxy you got on the edge or on the bottom. Now I always sand the bottom. I don't usually sand it to the same level that I'll sand the top, but I will sand it and make sure you finish it as well because if you don't finish the bottom of your project, uh, your board could warp differently because it'll pull moisture in that uh, the top isn't pulling in because you've got finish on it. So always finish the sides, the top and the bottom. Okay, this is, I'm getting ready for the final glue up here. Uh, notice I have dominoes to help keep the surface perfectly flat. And that's really the beauty of dominoes. Um, and the Festool domino cutter is probably the best piece of machinery you can buy to do dominoes. Biscuits will work too. Notice the grain. Uh, this is why I was so careful at putting that grain uh, together and matching it up. And also notice I'm using a lot of scrap pieces of wood so I don't mar the surface. Here I always use, have a bucket and a couple rags and I 
get my glue, squeeze, get it out, and then just wipe it down. I was particularly cautious with this job because I wanted this vanity to be absolutely perfect. If you get a good squeeze out, I mean, I've not had any problems with glue ups. And I think the reason I've not is because I'm always very careful that I have a good squeeze out all the way around and I have good, I mean, if you put your boards together and they they don't look tight, they're not going to be tight no matter how tight you squeeze them. So if you get them where you can just put them up against each other, you're in good shape. Here I am sanding the completed project and getting ready to trim it to exact size. So I take the template, actually tape it down, and there's going to be a eighth of an inch or a sixteenth of an inch along the way that needs to be trimmed. And it's not perfectly square because the drywall that the guys put in wasn't square. So I'm using a little, I think it's a eight inch or six inch uh, hand uh, sander, uh, belt sander. Uh, my dad was a wood shop teacher and he used to call belt sanders project ruiners because they, they have a tendency to ruin projects. But if you're careful and hold it very cautiously, you'll be okay. Here's, I'm um, putting, again, mineral spirits on the whole thing so I can see, and I'm checking carefully, see if there's any little scratches or anything. This is my first coat of finish. It's Osmo Wood Wax, extra thin 1101 clear. This is my new go-to finish. You put the clear on first with one of those 3M scotch brights, and it does not take much. This stuff's expensive, but you rub it in, let it soak, and then you buff it off with your sander, but you put a scotch bright, one of these white scotch brights on your sander, and buff it with that, and that works it into the surface. What I usually do is one coat of the 1101 clear and then two coats of the Poly X uh, oil and uh, the Osmo, another Osmo product. So it's two different products, uh, one coat of the 1101 and two coats of the other product. I put a notice on the screen of what the uh, exact number is on it. I think it's 3054 and it's clear satin, satin. But this stuff is so cool. You just wipe it on, wipe it in with the grain or without, it doesn't matter. And notice how little I'm putting on there. I'm just drizzling it onto the top. And that might have even been a little too much because when I buffed it, it came off on the. Uh, the buffing pad, but it makes a beautiful, beautiful finish. Now this is the second coat or third coat of the Osmo PolyX, and again it's applied the same way. You rub it in, let it sit for about a half hour, and then wipe it off and then buff it. You can also buff it by hand but it's so much easier to just use your uh, sander and put a clean pad on it. <clears throat> Here, I this I'm wiping off any excess, looking for scratches, and then the next morning I'm buffing it with the buffer, also known as a sander. And again, this is after the third and final coat. Here it goes. 
This Osmo PolyX oil is really nice stuff. You just drizzle it on and wipe it off. Uh, a lot of guys are using it for a lot of projects now. I, I've used it on backgammon board, a couple backgammon boards I just made, and uh, the finish is just beautiful. It's actually used for floors as well. So look into it if you, if you want a nice finish that's easy to apply. I also like o Odie's oil. Um, I, that had been the one I was using, but I'm liking this stuff. It's a little easier to apply and buff. Anyway, uh, this is, I'm getting very, very close to the end of this project. Uh, the, uh, the buffing, you know, the more you do, the deeper it goes into the surface and the more lustrous it looks. But you can see in the sunshine there, it, it just looks beautiful. So once I did this, I loaded it up in my truck and took it over to the client's house. And here coming up is the client and I putting it in place. Uh, he didn't want the plumbing to be visible, so he mounted it all high enough that it'll be hidden uh, unless you're down on your hands and knees like I will be in a few moments. But... Uh, I put some two by fours into the wall with, you know, three inch uh, screws, made sure everything was perfectly level because I know my, my vanity is perfectly level and flat. Double checked everything and then heart pounding, carried it in with my buddy and kind of slid it right into place. And I was so thankful. I mean, just a teeny bit of a mark on the one wall, and it didn't really matter because he's putting wallpaper up anyway. I had pre-drilled the holes for the plumbing and the sink. And now here, there's the sink, what it's going to look like. I put uh, little metal L brackets underneath to uh, support it and to hold it in place, although I don't think there's any way it would have gone anywhere. But I uh, double-checked everything to make sure it's level. And again, you're going to have inconsistencies in drywall work. Uh, anytime you're working with a contractor and a, and we had told him be as careful as you can to make that area square but you know they do what they do this is when it's I mean this is my buddy who owns the house and helping me and uh, it's nice to have somebody kind of knows what they're doing uh, but He's been telling me since uh, the job was done that uh, the various carpenters and plumbers and people who came through the house have been very impressed with the uh, woodwork. Here it is finished uh, with his uh, wallpaper up. I've got a picture with the lights off and then another one with pictures with the lights on. And it came out just beautiful. So thanks for watching and uh, please subscribe to my channel. Have a good one.